Hey guys, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and definitely ring a ding ding that bell notification button. It helps the channel grow and it helps me bring you guys a lot more. Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy. And today we have one of the, my most anticipated figures in this line for the past few years. And it is the con exclusive Super Saiyan 2 Goku. I'm really glad I picked this one up as I do truly think it exhibits the exclusive archetype being one of a kind figures. All right, enough chatter, let's get into it. All right, so if you were debating on whether or not to pick this guy up, you'll be pleased to know that there are quite a few things going for this figure in favor of a purchase. But let's start with the obvious here. This is the only figure in the line where you'll have Goku in this transformation without customizing or purchasing third party accessories. Now, I could be wrong here, but I think Super Saiyan 2 in general still has that cult fan following of its own, myself included, and why not? It's an awesome transformation, and I was glad to see it get a little bit more follow attention in Dragon Ball Super. This figure now joins the ranks of Gohan, and I, I would say Majin Vegeta, but I'm not going to because that figure's head sculpt isn't really much different from Cell Saga Vegeta's, or the 2.0 anyway. But this is an exclusive, and there's no other way to get this transformation, especially for Goku, without picking this up. Next up is a commonality we see across exclusive in general, and that is the increase in the quality of plastic, as well as the immaculate painting on the figure. Guys, I can't get over it. There's no bleeding edges or anything. There's no random specks of paint. The hair looks great. It's got that golden sheen to it. And aside from the hair paint being unique and more of a golden color, it's true to the Super Saiyan 2 transformation. Now, the face plates came out great as well, and I love the four expressions they chose to include here. Very well rounded for the emotions and expressions that Goku would probably convey while in the Super Saiyan 2 form. I mean, you don't see like happy faces as much as in the Super Saiyan 1, right? So that's what I'm getting at. And of course, we can't forget to mention that aura effect he comes with. This thing is pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably my favorite so far. It is my favorite, not probably. It has four lightning effects that peg into it using ball joints, which of course means you can position them in any way you'd like as well. And this effect truly elevates the figure to another level. Unlike the Goku Black exclusive, which I reviewed a while back, it also came with an art effect, but there's no flat feeling here as if something's missing to have the aura effect mesh with the figure, you know? The lightning just does that, and it goes with other characters too, I might add, like Gohan, Magic Vegeta, and I mean, for Super Saiyan 3, this was an interesting one here. You can use it, definitely, but if you're looking for just that vanilla kind of pose with him inside the lightning effect, you're gonna run into some problems just because of Goku's hair. So are there any drawbacks for this figure? Well, I'll tell you a couple. The first I've noticed is not exclusive to this figure, but it's definitely something I didn't expect, and that is QC issue, more specifically looseness of the hip cover here. Now while this shouldn't affect posing in any way, it does cheapen the feel of the figure slightly in hand. I mean, this is supposed to be kind of a premium release, right? So it stands to reason we really shouldn't be seeing this kind of stuff here. On the bright side though, I'm glad it isn't a loose head or neck or something because that would have been... I can't even find a politically correct adjective to use here, guys. It just would have been so... such a... I think other than this, the only drawback I'd like to grab about is the difficulty slash frailty of the aura lightning effect parts. They can be difficult to peg into place on the actual base, which is also a good thing because they'll hold. But at the same time, I can't help but worry about snapping these things due to the force required to get them into those holes. Again, not a major issue with the figure itself, but something to consider when you're spending hard-earned money here. Alright guys, so you've seen the good, the bad about this figure, you've seen people's reviews in the past, so in conclusion here, I'll say that if you haven't picked this figure up, go and get it right now. The price is only going to go up, yes it's slightly pricier than a regular release in the first place, but I think it's well worth it. Just as I thought, Awakening Goku is a must have for any collection, I feel the same way with this one. And it's my favorite Goku transformation and my favorite Goku in my collection today. I really don't see that changing for a while. For those of you who did pick it up already, are there any recommendations you'd give the community about the figure? Suggestions? Would you actually pick it up? Do you regret it if you did? If so, you know what to do below. That's all for now, and you know what I always say guys, may the best of today's be the worst of your tomorrows.